Jenny recounted the thrilling story of her entire adventure. She told Susie and Keith about Professor Zaza and his experiments, the truth behind the tragic accident in the mines, and how she discovered that her father was alive. But she left out one critical detail. The town that disappeared. How would they react to such an unfathomable revelation? Would they even believe her? She wasn't sure she believed it herself. What an incredible adventure! Although, I think the greatest discovery today has been our friendship. You never stop, do you? All these trials have really brought us together. And now that you and Keith are friends again, we can form our very own mystery solving club. It's just a shame we didn't unmask the man in black. So what's our next step, fearless leader? There's something about this case that still doesn't add up. I need to find my mom before the cops do. But she could be anywhere. No, she's gone to Widow's Drop. Where? Widow's Drop. But I have no idea where that is. It's certainly not on any map I've seen. That's because it's not a place. What? Yeah. It's a plant. My dad has had, uh, he grew one in his greenhouse. He had to separate it from all the other plants. They all started to shrivel up. Have you ever felt a flash of pure inspiration? The sudden feeling of everything falling into place. It's the moment a great detective lives for. An epiphany! Keith, what day do you take out the trash? What? What day does the garbage man come? Uh, oh, um, Friday? Why? It was right there the whole time! Jenny! I know where my mom is! Jenny! And I know who killed Dean Strasberry. Jenny! Look out! Birdie told me I'd find three unruly kids out after curfew. Oh no! Damn. Stealing, breaking and entering, destruction of property. You're all in a heap of trouble. Jenny, can't say I'm surprised to find you here. But Keith, Susie, I expected more from you. Sheriff, this is Station. Are you there? Go ahead, Station. Susie, Keith, I need you to create a distraction. What? There's no time to explain. Where are you going? You'll just have to trust me. Okay. No. Susie, please. No, not unless you say it. Say what? After everything we've been through, you know it's true. What are you talking about? Now is hardly the time for this. You told me to stand up for myself, so that's what I'm doing. Hold on a second. Enough chatter. Get your sorry butts over here now! We depend on each other. Admit it, Jenny. Come on, Jenny. It's not a big deal. Just say it. This is your last warning. I am not going to tell you again. Of all the challenges our tiny hero had faced, this was perhaps her toughest. You aren't alone, Jenny LeClue. You don't need to pretend anymore. As hard as it was to say it, 
Jenny knew deep in her heart it was true. Fine. Susie Glatz, you are my friend. Thank you, friend. Now, let's get you out of here. Yeah, I've got him. Safe and sound. I'm bringing him in now. What the? You'll never catch us, Copper! Sorry, Mr. LeClue. Well, do you have them or not? <sighs> I thought I did. Where did she go? It worked. Oh, how wonderful to hear your voice. I was having the strangest dreams. What's wrong? I almost didn't make it. But you did. Now, we've got a lot of work to do. really quite simple. Once I realized Mr. Strasbury knew he was going to die. p.m. precisely. In his planner, I noted that he had cancelled his meetings on Friday and rearranged a lunch date with Keith. At the time, this didn't strike me as unusual. Once I considered the possibility that Mr. Strasbury knew he was going to die on Thursday, everything started to fall into place. But consider this. If someone knew they were going to die, wouldn't they do everything in their power to escape their fate? And yet, the Dean didn't. There was only one explanation. He staged his own death.
body in the library, his apparent cause of death was electrocution. However, I noticed strange marks covering his neck. His face was discolored, and his skin was shriveled. Earlier that day, I found a microscope in Mom's lab that had been recently used. The remnants of a strange green liquid undulated on the slide. I would guess the very same liquid that Mom just injected into the Dean's neck. You knew how you were going to die, Mr. Strasbury. Poison. You knew because you made it yourself from one of your plants. A poison that you had an antidote for. That would be the method, but you couldn't work alone. You needed an accomplice. Someone to revive you when the time was right. dusty desk, I found a recently used vial. The residue was purple, the same color as the marks on the Dean's neck. This whole time, I thought Mom had met Mr. Strasbury at Widow's Drop. But Widow's Drop isn't a place. It's a plant. The plant you extracted the poison from. You plotted together to stage Mr. Strasbury's death. It was a simple scheme. Poison him with the plant, then return after the funeral to revive him. You had intended the death to appear natural, but not everything went according to plan. and fall from the balcony was an unfortunate accident. This threw the plan into disarray. The Dean instinctively reached out for something to stop himself from falling, but all he managed to grab was the ID card hanging around Mom's neck. Once she realized it was gone, she returned to collect it, but I had already found it. Even the smartest criminals make mistakes. Earlier, the Dean had told me he was meeting Mom in the library. That was a mistake. If I hadn't gone there to find Mom, she might still have escaped before the police arrived. Getting caught hadn't been part of the plan. <laughs> Quite remarkable, Jenny. And you worked out all that by yourself? Yes, that's how you did it. But the real question is why? Well... <sighs> That's all a bit more complicated, I'm afraid. It was a rhetorical question, Mr. Strasbury. I know why you're working together. But first, I have to tell you about aliens. Oh, this is exciting. What an incredible adventure this turned out to be. Jenny's growing up and discovering her full potential. And to think, I did it all without anybody dying. Hello? Richard! Oh, what do you think of the new scenes? Aren't they wonderful? I beg your pardon? Trick you? Certainly not. But don't you see? It all works out perfectly this way. I can already picture where the next book will start. You're not serious. But... I didn't promise anything. But... There must be another way. Just give me more time. Cancelled? Richard, please. Richard? Hello? Hello? It's no good. They won't publish it unless someone dies. But I can't do it. 
I just can't. Come on, Arthur. Jenny's whole world hangs in the balance. Decades of work, it can't all end now. Oh, I have to. It's like Jenny's mum always says. A great detective knows the right decision is often the hardest to make. And I am a great author of detective stories. But I can't pick. What should I do, Rufus? Brilliant! Yes! You're always right, old friend. I'll let fate decide. Here goes. Fate has spoken. But is she certain? Once the choice is made, there's no turning back. Jenny wasn't an option, was she? Oh, Rufus, I think I need to lie down. <clears throat> As I was saying... What was that? No more interruptions! The tremors were getting more violent and more frequent. Please! I'm in the middle of my astonishing denouement! Everyone in town thinks CJ is crazy. A madman spouting wild theories about aliens and hidden forces at work in Arthurton. But all the strange phenomena he's seen are real. And the culprits are men, not monsters. Zazer. He ran experiments to study the unique properties of Arthurton's resource, and his research was funded by a shady organization called the Council of Three. One of the experiments went tragically wrong and caused the collapse of the quartz mines. They covered it up and blamed the miners, and yet the experiments didn't stop. Instead, they built an even bigger facility. Years after the accident in the mines, an even greater tragedy struck Arthurton. Only this time, the townspeople didn't know. I don't fully understand it, but something happened to the whole town. And wherever we were, we aren't there anymore. The rest of the world think we disappeared. At first, I thought I was solving two separate mysteries. But then it hit me like a ton of used books. The two were inextricably linked. And that's how I know your motive for staging the Dean's death. Dad wasn't working for the university. He was working on Zazer's machines. 
all under the watchful eye of the Council of Three. The Dean is part of the Council of Three, or at least he works for them. His ring hides a key to access secret stations around town. After my dad's suspicious death, Mom confronted Mr. Strasbury. Racked with guilt, he confessed and begged for her forgiveness. He revealed the truth about the Council of Three. Instead of letting anger cloud her judgment, Mom saw an opportunity. And together, you concocted a plan to bring down the organization from the inside. Oh, what a brilliant mind you have, Jenny LeClue. Julie, I believe you underestimated this girl. You could have gotten yourself killed. But I didn't. But what if you had? I'm not a kid anymore. I have to make my own choices. A flower cannot blossom without light. Jenny had risked everything to save her mom. I... I'm sorry, Jenny. It's okay, Mom. You were running out of time to save Mr. Strasbury. I was trying to protect you. I know. <sighs> I should have trusted you. But you were wrong. I just apologized. No, not about that. Everyone presumed Dad died in a lab explosion. So did I, until today. But then, I started finding secret messages all over town. They led me to a secret room under the graveyard. And there, on a small television, I saw him. Henry? Dad is alive! But he's trapped on the other side, and he's been trying to contact us this whole time. He made it back? Then the experiment worked! Exactly! But if he made it back, that means... We can all get back! We need to get to the machine, right away. No! First, we need to find Professor Zazer. 